While at Star Wars Celebration Anaheim, Rocco Depot was able to speak with Star Wars author John Jackson Miller to talk to him about some of his recent books, both Star Wars and non-Star Wars. Unfortunately, the mic did pick up some other voices in the room, so you may hear some background noise, but we tried to clean it up the best we could, and we did want to present it for those who want to check it out. So, enjoy! Alright, mm -hmm. this may be taboo for a Star Wars convention, but uh, I want to talk to you about Star Trek Takedown first. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. Uh, what kind of uh, prep work did you have to do for Takedown? Uh, well, I certainly needed to uh, be aware of where the characters were relative to the other novels that uh, Pocket Books had out. Um, I also uh, needed to get some sense of the specs of... Enterprise relative to uh, Aventine, which is the, the ship that they're chasing throughout the uh, the book. I also uh, got out my copy of uh, Star Trek Star Charts and uh, you know, got a good idea of where all of the locations were in my story. Uh, so basically every place that uh, they go is someplace they could reasonably get to. Um, character voices can be hard to nail down and capture, but you really had something going with Senator Pretorius. Uh, well, where did you come about with his his voice, his character? Well, I think the the notion was that I, I wanted to show that uh, for a Romulan, um, you know, it was you know it, it's common for Romulans to, to have to try to claw over each other to become uh, at the top level of their society uh, and. With Pretorius, I wanted to show someone who had very limited prospects, uh, who had advanced as far as he was going to go and was on the way down. And uh, I wanted to show, particularly you know, as the events of the story unfold, um, what happens when somebody of his limited abilities uh, is uh, put in the position that... Uh, that opportunities of the book provide him. It's difficult to get too much into this book without uh, revealing some of the secrets of it, but uh, certainly pitting uh, Riker uh, against uh, against Picard, they're certainly friends, but they're on the opposite sides of this situation. Uh, Riker now being an admiral uh, in, the, in the book chronology, you know, provided some interesting story opportunities, and uh, then, of course, pitting Riker against uh, Bertorius, you know, we got to see the, their two different personalities uh, clashing there, too. I had a lot of fun with the book, and it was very well received. Oh, what inspired you to include the Medici quotes? Yeah, I, I, I always try to look for um, something interesting to tie together uh, the different sections of the book. So in Kenobi, uh, all the uh, section headers are uh, related to uh, you know, physical places uh, or metaphysical places on Tatooine. In uh, New Dawn, the section titles all related to uh, the various stages of explosive detonation. Whereas in you know, Takedown, I, it's very common for the uh, Trek novels to have quotes from real history or, or imagined history. And I, I wanted to have the political game that's going on in this book, things not quite being what they seem tied into you know, the Medici history and, and of course Machiavelli, uh, who aspired to be one of the Medici's uh, you know, advisors. In, in, you know, that was uh, his whole reason in writing The Prince, the great book of uh, political advice that he came up with. And it just struck me I, as I was reading through that there were these several quotes that uh, very well related to what was going on in the story at the time. Uh, you mentioned using the Star Trek book. Uh, did you use any sources for all the alien species? Uh, you know, the, the one of the best sources, of course, well, the TV shows are a very important source. You know, they have a wiki for the uh, TV series uh, and movies, which is Memory Alpha. Uh, and then also for the, the species that did not appear on the TV series uh, or were only mentioned, uh, then we go to memory beta, and uh, those were very helpful. What kind of advice did you get for writing a Star Trek novel? Well, you know, I think the, you know, the key advice was that uh, 
I wanted to include the major characters, but also give some time to uh, some of the secondary characters that have been developed in the, the Star Trek literary canon. And uh, so, you know, that's one of the things that I tried to do. You know, also, if there was ever a you know, general direction of, of suggestions as I was going on, it was to uh, take the sort of looser, you know, dialogue, forms of address, that sort of thing, uh, that I might more commonly do in my own work. Uh, or uh, on my work for Star Wars, you know the the uh, the Trek you know dialogue is a lot more formal, and it's much less likely to be you know, casual, uh, except in certain circumstances. Yeah, there are a lot of layers to the story. Did you have to do anything to try and keep that organized? Is all the different people are traveling around? Yes, and I did. Wind in and out together. Yes, I did. I, I ended up uh, getting a, 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 a magnetic board where I had a. You know, all the various uh, plot points uh, there, because one of the big concerns of the book is, is uh, you know, information. There has been a strike against the, you know, communication systems uh, in the sector, and so various uh, characters only know certain things at certain times, and so I needed to have a sense of what uh, the people on Enterprise knew and what the people on Titan, uh, Riker's ship. Uh, knew and then of course I needed to know where Aventine was relative to uh, you know the other players because there there are you know seven different factions involved in this book it's it sounds like a lot but it's actually it's actually very streamlined and uh, you'd mentioned use shorter chapters in this book. yes uh, what brought you to doing that I that's been a trend of mine uh, especially as I've you know, been writing along uh, the uh, the chapters in uh, New Dawn are, are quite short. The chapters in Takedown are, are even shorter. You know, part of it is to keep the story moving quickly. Another part of it is simply because with the Star Trek universe, you have the transporter, uh, so there is not a lot of time uh, going from scene to scene. I'm able to put people immediately in settings, and of course, that's that's you know a consequence of them having created that story device uh, for the TV series 50 years ago. Uh, along those lines, how have you gone about improving your craft as a writer? Well, I uh, you know, certainly am, am trying to diversify the, the language that I use a lot more. I get to the end of every book now, and I uh, you know, can it through a, a word frequency counter, uh, so I'm able to you know, flag for myself, okay, here are, the, here are the terms, here are the words, here are the phrases that I lean on too much and uh, you know that's a really helpful thing uh, because it allows me to go back in and uh, give things more variety. Now that Star Wars Rebels Season 1 is over, how do you feel your characterizations of Kanan and Hera build up? I think that they, they came remarkably close given the fact that I hadn't seen any of the episodes when I was writing the book uh, but I had an idea of what they wanted for these characters for five years later you know, there's there's a there's an aspect to them that's that's very much a family, and uh, you know, I had that uh, that sort of sense uh, that that was beginning to develop, uh, even in very early moments uh, in New Dawn. Uh, we have that uh, that scene where Kanan and Hera and Skelly and Zaluna are all walking along, and Kanan refers to them as mom, dad, the crazy uncle, and grandma, and of course they all take offense to that, but. Uh, but that is kind of where it's beginning to go by that point. And uh, you know, certainly as we get to the end of the first season of Rebels, I think we get a, a definite notion that uh, you know, there's a, a family dynamic there. What do you think of the show? Oh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I've, uh, I've watched all of it. Um, never really got to watch all of Clone Wars, uh, but uh, this time I was able to catch it all from the start. Do you get to watch it with your kids? Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they watch it. They, they like it, uh, particularly the destructive moments. <laughs> Uh, this month you'll have a new short story out in Star Wars Insider called Orientation. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, that is uh, in Insider 157, and it is it was written to tie in to Paul Kemp's uh, Lords of the Sith novel, and and it does so. It's a Darth Vader you know, Emperor story. The first time that I've written uh, the Emperor at all, and uh, it's really only the second time that I've written Darth Vader since my very first comic book for Dark Horse nine years ago, uh, which was an issue of Star Wars Empire. But it is also a tie-in, in a sense, to A New Dawn, uh, there being a character 
in this book meeting Darth Vader uh, for the first time, and that, that in fact is a, a moment that was mentioned and referred to in A New Dawn, and I'm glad I was able to show that moment. And have you read any of the Marvel Star Wars comics that have come out recently? Uh, yes, I have. What and, do you think of those? Well, I certainly, uh, you know, like um, you know, Kanan uh, number one, where, you know, there's a, uh, there's this, uh, a couple of references in there to, uh, you know, what uh, happened uh, later on in uh, in A New Dawn. Uh, actually, there were references back to the uh, flashback or prologue sequence from A New Dawn that were in there, and I thought that was really cool. It just you know shows the uh, story group at work, making sure everything is uh, is connected. Yeah, Greg Weisman, he did a really good job with that one. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, are you doing anything more with your overdraft setting? Uh, there is a st- uh, story that is out right now. Um, it is the lead story in an anthology called Apollo's Daughters. Uh, that's an anthology that has uh, you know, my work, uh, the work of uh, Michael Stackpole, David Allen Mack, also the, uh, the last story from uh, Aaron Alston, who passed away uh, here last year. Uh, that is all from Silence in the Library Publishing. The story is... Uh, called Burnout, and it is the first adventure, really, of uh, the uh, the career of uh, Bridget Yang, uh, who is, uh, of course, the you know the head of the security team in Overdraft. So, is this story set before the other ones? It is set well before the other ones. Uh, it is the short story, including the first short story. So, yes, it is indeed, and that is uh, that is uh, you know before she she meets uh, you know many of the characters, but it does show her meeting with one of the one of the the characters that we meet later on and it it's a it's a pivotal moment in her career and uh you don't have to have read the rest of overdraft to be able to to get uh, to get it but uh uh again that is in uh, that is in Apollo's daughters that is available online both in physical format and digital and is there anything else readers can look forward uh coming from you well, uh, there is a uh, there's a story, uh, not a story, but there's a there's a collection of my work from uh, Marvel coming out. Uh, they are collecting the uh, Knights of the Old Republic comics that I did. Uh, first volume is Star Wars uh, Epic or Star Wars Epic Legends collection or something like that. Legends Epic collection, uh, the Old Republic volume one that is due out on July first. That is issue zero through eighteen, I believe, of Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, that's good because that work was out of print at Dark Horse uh, and sold out at Dark Horse uh, really pretty much since the middle of last year. So I'm glad to get that out again. And um, you know, as for some other projects, it's one of those things where things that have not been announced cannot be discussed. All right, John, I want to thank you for taking the time to sit down for an interview. Uh, you're welcome. I'm certainly glad to do it. We'd like to thank you for listening to our interview with John Jackson Miller. If you'd like to find out more about John, please visit his website, farawaypress.com. And to check out more Star Wars interviews and coverage, be sure to head over to rocodepot.com.